Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Swaggin on with Swagger Gaming, bringing you another video from the World of Warcraft Battle for Azeroth beta test servers. Today, we'll be looking at the herbalism profession. For the most part, herbalism hasn't changed much and is still essentially running around and clicking on nodes. There have, however, been some changes to professions in general, and of course, there are new herbs. The herbs in Legion were all found in their specific zone, so you could just go somewhere and know what you're gonna get. In BFA, they have taken a different approach and made each type of herb spawn in certain environments, with a few exceptions for rarer plants. The animations when picking herbs in Battle for Azeroth show the stock remaining, which leads me to believe that each node can only spawn that specific type of herb, including the rarer spawns. If this is the case, it will lead to an easier time if you need to grab something specific. Riverbud is our first common herb, and like its name suggests, it is found on the banks of rivers and lakes on the interior of continents. It looks like a curly pod and is abundant in almost every zone. Sea stalks are the ocean counterpart of riverbud, and they can be found on the shores of coastal areas. These look like bunches of pink flowers and are easily farmable in most zones. I have not found any that have spawned in the water itself. Siren's Pollen is probably the most common herb and is found on tree trunks in pretty much every environment. Note that these literally spawn on trees and not the ground. Siren's Pollen also has a low chance to spawn a swarm of insects that you can kill for some extra Siren's Pollen. This was the only herb that I found with a mechanic like this, and it happened under 5 times total on the way to max herbalism skill. Star Moss is the last of the commonly found herbs and only spawns on man-made structures such as buildings, ruins, bridges, etc. Like Siren's Pollen, Star Moss spawns up on walls so you need to make sure you're looking up. Unfortunately, Star Moss has a nasty habit of spawning out of reach. You can try and get creative to reach it, but I found a lot of the times it's just easier to keep moving. Anchorweed is the green quality herb, but is not actually all that rare. It appears to have its own nodes and can be found pretty much anywhere you would find other herbs, so it's fairly easy to farm up. This is good, because it looks like anchor weed will be required in all flasks. Beyond these 5 herbs, there are actually 2 more. These are technically common spawns, but can only be found on one continent or the other. Don't worry, you can unlock quick travel into enemy territory through the war campaign to farm up some of the opposing faction's herbs. Akunda's Bite is only found in Voldoon, but appears to spawn in all environments within the zone. It is kind of a pain to farm though because it feels like most of the nodes are near wandering monsters. Winter's Kiss is found in both Tiragard Sound and Dressfar, but only in the snowy areas. That being said, it is probably the easiest to farm given the number and proximity of nodes. Okay, now that we've gone over the new herbs, let's talk about how to level and progress through the herbalism system. Like all professions, herbalism was split out into progression for each expansion, so you can start progression in Battle for Azeroth without having to go back through old content. The max skill level for BFA is 150 and is simply leveled up through picking herbs like it always has been. Make sure when you are starting out, you go to the herbalism trainer and learn the Battle for Azeroth herbalism skill. You will not be able to skill up without it. At skill level 1, you can pick up rank 1 of each of the common herbs, including Akunda's Bite and Winter's Kiss. At skill level 25, you can grab the 1 star rank for Anchor Weed. Once you hit 50 skill level in BFA Herbalism, you will get a bunch of quests from your Herbalism Trainer that will allow you to grab rank 2 of the common herbs. These are typically menial tasks, but they send you all over both continents to complete. Note that the Winter's Bite quest requires fishing. The rank 2 Anchorweed quest comes at skill level 75 and requires you to complete the 5 man dungeon Waycrest Manor. You can get another round of quests to grab rank 3 of everything at max skill level, except for Akunda's Bite and Winter's Kiss. These two herbs can only be ranked up through a quest that drops from herbing that specific flower. You will want to get rank 3 as soon as possible because it increases the amount of herbs you get from nodes. If you are ever stuck, the herbalism skill window shows how to rank up a specific flower. They got rid of a lot of the quest bloat for professions, which makes a more streamlined experience than Legion. The quests that are there lead to specific rewards, and they give some of the lore behind the different flowers, which is cool as well. There are a couple of other ways to grab herbs as well. Multiple plant type monsters throughout the world can be herbed once you kill them, but do not guarantee a drop. The other way is through alchemy. You can transmute 5 of each common ore into a bag of herbs. 
This is probably not super efficient as herbs appear to be a lot more prevalent than ore. It took me about two and a half to three hours to max out herbalism, but this was with me killing rares, opening treasure chests, and mining as well, so I'm sure it will be faster for people that don't get as distracted as I do. Anyways, that's all I have on herbalism and BFA. If you like this video, please think about hitting that like button and subscribing to the channel for more gaming content. Thanks for watching and have a great one.